Hello, Rita Pops! It's time for the best video of all year! This is the book video that all book channels look forward to. I'm gonna be going over all 68 books, I think it is, that I read this year. With that being said, this whole journey started because I went to a beach trip in June. So I became a reader in June. I mean, I came, I became a reader in middle school, but I started reading books as an adult this June. So this is from like six months. Next year should be even more fun, hopefully. We'll see. But yeah, I'm just gonna be going through my Goodreads, through the order of books in which I read them, and telling you if you should read them or not. Does that sound fun to you? Sounds fun to me. I actually wanted to start reading because I wanted to read some more theology books, so I read The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Towser. If you <coughs> if you want to learn more about God, get closer to God, read this book. He's a genius. I love this book. Five stars. First fiction book I read all year was The Perfect Couple by Elin Hildebrand. I read this book because my friend lent it to me, and because she lent it to me, this whole bookshelf is here now. This book takes place on the island of Nantucket, so it's a great summer read. If you're gonna go to a beach, love the vibes and basically somebody gets murdered at this wedding this detective has to interview every single character at this wedding to see who who done it i gave this book three stars because i loved the entire book until the ending the last page when you figure out everything that happened i was so underwhelmed and that really sucks because i loved the entire book but yeah three stars goodreads is showing these out of order so i'm just gonna get these out of the way first i read this tiny book very recently the freedom of self-forgetfulness by timothy keller this deals with pride it's so little an amazing book about pride and the freedom of self-forgetfulness. Highly recommend to everyone, even if you're not Christian. These three books, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl, Bad Blood, and As Good as Dead. This is a YA murder mystery with a little subplot of romance, and it was one of my favorite series and favorite books I've read all year. I highly recommend to anyone. They're clean, they're fun, they're page turning, and the romance in it, I love so much. Ew, let's get this book out of the way. Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. I read this for my Reading for 50 Hours Straight video on my main channel. Go watch that if you like to read or watch people read. In this book, I don't like it. It's the only Christmas romance book I tried to read this year, and it really just felt like a non-plot so that they could bang, basically. Should I say that? I'm really hyper right now, and when I'm hyper, I say things that maybe I shouldn't say. Where is this stupid book? Oh, it's right down at the bottom. Okay, awesome, very good. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I think everybody who doesn't read, read this book this year because of TikTok. Yeah, I hated the first 250 pages and I actually liked the last 100 because of you know who. Super cheesy. Like when she said, I don't believe there are bad people, just people who do bad things. I knew, I knew I was not going to like it. Colleen Hoover tends to write some lines like that. And once you look past those, they're pretty enjoyable books. They're just easy to read. Like if you don't read, pick up a Colleen Hoover book, you'll finish it in two days, you'll feel proud. And it's kind of fun. I don't know. Okay, now back in order. Oh my gosh. Okay, so Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a comfort book in so many ways because it's the second book that I ever read this year as an adult. I read it on the beach and it was my first romance book that I read as, as an adult. So this was like my discovery. So for that, it makes it so special. But I do think after reading so many romances this year, this one still stands as one of my favorites. And the characters and the chemistry in this book are just amazing. They're both authors. So they're witty, their banter is great, they're smart, and like the tension is perfect before they get together, so I highly recommend this book. After I finished that, I was on a small island in Florida, and I really wanted to read another book because I was getting obsessed. There were no bookstores except for the tiny book section in CVS, so I picked up a Nora Roberts book because this lady has written over 200 romance novels, and she is in every CVS, every airport ever. So I read Small Town Dreams, which is actually two stories in one book, which I didn't know. So I read the first book and I gave it two stars. It's like, okay, I read it because I was on, on an island. I would not pick this up otherwise. Naturally, I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry because I love her writing style. I gave this book four stars and I really liked it. This is also just a comforting book, but I don't like it as much as Beach Read, not nearly as much. Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers this is actually a movie. I think it's out already. It's gonna be out in theaters, which is crazy because this is actually a Christian author and this book specifically is based off of the book in the Bible, Hosea, I believe. Yeah, Hosea. This one is thick, but it was so worth it. It's a romance, it's a love story. It's a beautiful love story. I think one of the purest loves I've read all year, and it's so unique. It definitely does not have the plot structure of most romance books that you're going to read. So if you just want some like really great writing, clean book, beautiful, beautiful love, 
romance, redeeming love story. Pick this up. I just picked up one of her other books, The Masterpiece, which I'm going to read next year. This is a nonfiction, Love Lives Here by Maria Goff, and there's just like a lot of fun advice in here. If you're a Christian or you just want some motivation and encouragement, I highly recommend this book. The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is in Enemies to Lovers. They go to Hawaii. It was fun. I didn't like the last hundred pages because she brings us this totally new weird plot line that just is random, but I loved the first like 250 pages of this book. It's just a fun romance. I gave that one three stars. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I went into this one blind. Obviously I could guess that there was going to be some mythology in here. What's it called? Greek mythology. Yes, Greek mythology. I don't like reading about war and I don't like myth Greek mythology. <laughs> So I don't know what made me think that I would like this book, but I will say her writing, impeccable. It honestly reminded me of Olive Blake's writing in Alone With You in the Ether. The way that she writes romance is so beautiful. Like historical fiction, you can't get me to read it. So for those reasons, no, but I see why people love this book and I really liked her writing a lot. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This is, uh, yeah, this is my favorite Colleen Hoover book. I think this is the best romance that she's written. It's a brother's best friend romance, kind of like enemies to lovers. They're not really enemies. He's just kind of like a grouch. This book did make me cry. So there's that element at the end that I was not expecting. And I just really liked their chemistry. Like I really believed their love and I got the butterflies and favorite Colleen Hoover book by far. Next I read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, which was my first fantasy book super out of my comfort zone. And while I did really like this book, I just didn't really get excited over it or care that much, even though I liked it. It was just very much like a, hmm, I'm observing what other people like and I get it, but it's just not for me. So for that reason, I'm giving it three stars. I feel like a shark on Shark Tank right now. For those reasons, I'm out. Um, that was really bad joke delivery. I'm gonna move on. Verity by Colleen Hoover, which is a romance thriller and boy, oh boy was it thrilling. I was not expecting it to be as scary as it was. It's a super quick read. You're gonna want to get to the end to find out what happens. I love the plot twist and the sort of open ending that this has. I am team manuscripts. Comment down below what you are. If you like thrillers and you like romance, highly recommend. I gave it five stars. Ooh, so cute. Next up is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. The movie for this just came out and I watched it, which was so fun to actually get to see one of the books I read come to life. I didn't necessarily like the movie. <laughs> at all like I haven't actually finished it all. I watched 75% of it and then watched Noelle Gallagher's reaction video to it But the book itself I love it's a enemies to romance enemies to romance I guess you could say that enemies to lovers romance They're in a workplace setting and it's just super cutesy like a lot of the scenes I really enjoy in this book and compared to a lot of the other romances I read this year This is definitely up there with one of my favorites if you're not a big reader and you want some romance I recommend this book full stars next is Malibu rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I had never read a Taylor Jenkins Reid book before even though she has a lot of fans. Everyone was really looking forward to this book. I got the weird large print version of it because this book was sold out everywhere. So I did really like this. I gave it four stars and it's super atmospheric. I love that it's set in Malibu. Honestly, if it wasn't set in Malibu, I don't know that I would read it. This is just a literary fiction. There's not really romance plots in here. And the thing about her writing is the second I start to get invested in one of the characters, she switches POVs and I have never seen point of views switch so much in one book before. Literally towards the end, a bunch of celebrities start coming to this party and she will switch to a POV of a character that we get to see for two pages and then never talk about them again. And so for that, like the character development, like I just couldn't get super attached to these people, even though I feel like if she stayed within like the five siblings, I probably would have been so, 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 so invested. So four stars. The Weight of Glory by C I am clearly not holding The Weight of Glory. I'm holding The Great Divorce, which I would recommend, but what I'm about to review is The Weight of Glory. Yes, Lewis, my favorite author ever, so I'm just trying to read every book he's ever written. This one in particular, I would not recommend because it's just a lot of essays about stuff that isn't necessarily relevant today. So I love it because I love C.S. Lewis, but I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone. Next up, the book that I recommend to absolutely everyone, top two books of this entire year, Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. It's a childhood friends to lovers book. It has alternating timelines, second chance romance. They are nerds. They love books. They read books together. I love it so much. If you don't read, read this book. Five stars. This book is really far down here, but it's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Super hyped up book. Woo! Painfully slow, my friends. Painfully, painfully slow. Felt like I was getting my teeth ripped out. And then at the end, I was so shocked by the ending that I gave it five stars. But now looking back, I'm like, you had a terrible reading experience with that book. Let's be real. I think it's such a beautiful story. She could have done so much with a character who is forgotten and lives for like 400 years. She could have done 400 years. I don't know how long she lived. This character could have done so many cool things and we could have seen so many historical things go throughout her life. But we didn't. We really saw nothing. It was really 
really boring, so you know, I would probably take this five star rating to like a two. Next, I read Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I'd heard a lot about this author, and this is just a literary fiction, which I hadn't read much of. Basically, there is this bank robber who gets stuck in this open house. So the bank robber is holding all of these people at this open house hostage, and we basically just get to see human interaction and how strange all of these characters are, all of their quirks. It was really fun. His writing, I definitely understand why he's such a great author and why people love him. He does this thing where at the end of the chapters, certain characters connect in a way that you don't expect and it's super like oh wow and I love having those moments in books but overall I just don't I really just don't like literary fiction that much but for what it was I think I gave it four stars it happened one summer by Tessa Bailey my first Tessa Bailey book and she writes a really good romance this is a grumpy ex sunshine romance and I really liked how different their characters were like sunshine was really 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 sunshiny to the point where she was like this bratty LA socialite and she gets cast away to this small fisherman town where she meets this grumpy fisherman fishermen and they have their romance and they make compromises in their life for each other and that's all great so I gave this four stars but I will say if you're not trying to read those scenes those not clean scenes this has some really not clean scenes in it and you're gonna have to skip like two of them I think you have been warned okay next my favorite book this is my other top two books of the year the Atlas six by Olive Blake I have now read two Olive Blake books and I can say that she is probably one of my favorite fiction authors this in particular is fantasy and magical realism which is super out of my comfort zone in genre as as you can see and I absolutely freaking loved it so that says even more I literally just farted and I don't know if you could hear it and I don't know what I was saying so I can't repeat it um oof next is a book I do not recommend the kiss quotient by Helen Huang honestly this one's on me guys this one is on me. Basically, there's a girl named Stella who has autism and so she's feeling very nervous about getting into the dating scene because of how inexperienced she is so that she hires a, what's it called? She hires a, an escort to teach her all those things. And as someone who tries to skip not clean scenes, you can't do that in this book. So that's on me, guys. You can see like throughout my journey, I start to actually research books before I read them. So yeah, not for me, baby. Not for me. Another book, not for me. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. The book concept itself was really good and I really liked her writing kind of, but it was really, really, really dark. And one of the characters kills people because he believes that because they are sinners, he should kill them in God's name. And for that reason, I'm gonna be, ha I'm gonna have to be out, Sharks. I'm sorry, but for that reason, I'm out. Okay, next, Addicted to You. Woo, this series. This is the first book in the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series. There's actually like 20 books in this world of this family, if you really wanna get into it, by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This one follows Lily and Lo. They are childhood friends to lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes ever. And you get to follow their family dynamics and all that stuff, and they're rich billionaires, and it's just like, the best book fun con candy series for your brain ever. This was for my reading books that Steph Borer read. So I read The Deal, which is the first book in the off-campus series. This is by L. Kennedy, and it's like a college hockey sports romance. And this is the worst writing that I read all year. I get why people like it. It's basically just reading Wattpad like in a book. Um, but I personally, I wasn't here for the Wattpad. It just wasn't. I'm sorry, it's not even an ego thing because I will read a romance book and tell you if I love it. We've got quite a few books in a row that I'm just not liking. Oh, friend. This is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas that I was reading for the reading Steph Boar's favorite books. This is a age gap romance and the age gap is like 18 or 19 and the guy's like 40 something. Like he's literally her ex-boyfriend's dad. I can't, guys. I can't do it, no. Okay, and then I kept reading the Addicted series, so I read Ricochet, 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 which is the second book in the series, and I read other books in between, so I read, oof, another book I did not like. Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. People love this series so much, and I just, I could not feel the chemistry. I couldn't feel the chemistry the whole time. I just was like, am I missing something here? Like, I get the writing style, I get it, but it just feels fake and not, I just did not care about the characters whatsoever. I just, I just couldn't get into it, I'm sorry. Gentle and Lonely by Dane Ortland, The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers. <gasps> Maybe if you're Christian, read this book. Third book in the Addicted series, Addicted, 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 Addicted for Now. This one was one of my favorites. I love this one so much. November 9th by Colleen Hoover. I think this month I just really wanted to like read another book. So I read this in a night. I read it so fast that I don't really think, like I think if I read it slower, I would have liked it because I did like the characters okay. Sometimes I have to admit that I don't like her writing, but it's hard to admit that because so many people love her so much. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I really just didn't like this book that much. <laughs> Then I read Kiss the Sky, which is in the Callaway Sister series, but you read Addicted and Callaway Sister series intertwined. So this was the next one. Loved it. And then I read Hot House Flower, which is the one you're supposed to read after. 
five stars. And then I read Thrive. You're supposed to go back to this series. And then you read Addicted After All, which is the last one in that. And then you go back over to Callaway Sisters and you read Feel the Fire. And then you read Long Way Down, Love. And then you're supposed to read this huge 700 page epilogue, which ties up the entire series. And I have not read this yet. Um, I honestly don't want to say goodbye to this family, so I have not read this yet, but I will. Another nonfiction, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. I highly recommend this nonfiction. I have not read a nonfiction in so long where I actually made steps to improve my life and basically talks about how we're all infected with hurry sickness. We're always in such a rush and this is just about the beauty of slowing down and how that can help your spiritual life so, so, so much and just your life in general. So highly recommend this. Then I read Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This is a literary fiction. So like I said, I just don't really get that invested into literary fiction. This one was pretty good though because I really liked the characters and it was just very interesting because it talks a lot about race and like really, 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 really subtle things racially that you might not notice about yourself or about others. So I think I actually gave this four stars. Next I read The Silent Patient which is a thriller and went in my favorite books of the year video so five stars. Then I read All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. If you look on my Goodreads and you see that I rated this four stars, sometimes I just lie to myself when I read Colleen Hoover and I know that sounds mean. I like them because if I'm in a book slump I can read these so fast but I don't, I didn't really like this book. It's a second chance romance of a marriage and it's mostly just sad. Then I read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Loved this book so much more by her. They're in a cool 70s band and you just get to read dialogue the entire book. And I highly recommend because it's also becoming a show and I'm so freaking excited for that. Next, it was October, so I decided to read a thriller. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I gave this three stars. It just wasn't giving what I wanted it to give and it was honestly really graphic and kind of disturbing, so I don't recommend this book. If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This is a dark academia murder mystery. We've got six characters and they're doing a Shakespeare play and they just start descending into madness and there's some like drama, there's some romance subplots and I love this book so much. One of my favorites of the entire year. Five stars. The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I read this because I found it at Half Price Books and it was really fun. It's about this group of husbands and partners who join this romance book club so that they can read romance books, which they call manuscripts to save their relationships. And I just thought that premise was so cute. And so that's what he does. And they're all baseball players. So it's such a cute concept. And I gave it four stars, really liked it. Then I read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This book has so much freaking hype. I thought I would like magical realism because I read The Atlas Six and everyone was like, if you like magical realism, read The Night Circus. And so I did. And it's about this very magical circus and these magicians who have to fight to the death. And let me tell you, that would have been great if she didn't focus on a bunch of these sub characters for the majority of the book and then tied up the actual two main characters at the end. And by the end of the book, I was like, yeah, that would have been great if you started there. What's going on? I, I gave this four stars after I read it because I was so confused why everyone else liked it and I felt pressured. But hindsight is 2020 and this book is two stars. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gone that hard on a book that so many people love, but I'm sorry. I don't get it. I'm just getting more and more honest the longer that the camera rolls. So this is kind of scary. Hi, Moose. The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. If you want a good romance book that will give you butterflies, read this. I gave it five stars. Top three romances of the year. Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This is a YA literary fiction romance book. I picked it up on a whim because the cover was pretty and she lives in Austin, Texas and she is Asian. And I thought, what the heck? That sounds like me. I want to read about me because everyone loves themselves. And it turns out I didn't like this book at all. Two stars. I need to go back and change all my ratings because like I said, hindsight is 2020 and I was just being nice. Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. Totally think that this is an underrated romance book. It's a second chance romance and the way that it is written is so cool structurally and I gave this 4.5 stars. I highly recommend this and I feel like people should talk about this book way more. Next is a book that I think people talk about too much. The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Sabata. I wanted to read one of her books because everyone says that she is great at slow burn. And while I did have fun reading this book, by the time they got together, it was so slow that I didn't even care. It was like, yeah, by this point, they should have been together. And I know that's the point of slow burn, but it was too slow for me. And the main guy in this book didn't show emotion basically at all, and I just couldn't connect with that very much. Next up is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This book is, looks not long, but the pages are Bible thin. It 
feels like. This is another Dark Academia 6 friends in this very elite class and there's a murder of one of their friends that happens and it's just told to you right at the beginning and then you have this insane tension throughout this whole book knowing that they're gonna kill this one friend but you don't know why or how it's gonna happen. This does read like a classic so it's gonna be slow, it's gonna be a little bit torturous but it's so rewarding and I really 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 liked this book so I gave it four stars. We're getting into what I read in October so I think we're almost done. The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. At this point I'm kind of like running out of romance books that I want to read and I always see this one at the store. This is a fake dating trope and I really 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 love fake dating trope. Overall this was just a three star romance for me. Next I read Bunny by Mona Awad. This is actually a horror book. It's kind of a dark academia. She's going to college and she gets kind of roped into this like weird cult of girls. It's basically like Frankenstein meets Mean Girls meets you are on drugs the whole time and then you read the last line and it blows your mind and you stare at a wall and you're like wait what does this mean and you have to look up theories and for that reason I thought it was so great so I gave it four stars. You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. This is a second chance romance of this couple who doesn't think they're going to make it to the altar because they are engaged but they're just really not working it out. I think it's for 200 pages they don't communicate at all but once they actually fall in love again that's not a spoiler right? I mean, come on. All of these romance books follow the same structure. I actually really liked it, and I thought there were some like actually like cute, valuable lessons in it. So I gave it four stars, but that's kind of generous. It's probably a 3.5. Okay, now we're getting into the books that I read in November, and everybody wanted a reading wrap-up, and I didn't make it. So if you wanted that, here's that. First, I read Spanish Love Deception by Ella Elena Armas. This one was super hyped up. I was so excited for it. It's basically like on Honeymooners, where they have to fake date and go on a trip to Spain, and I just really don't like her writing style. I found it really repetitive and strange. Yeah, I gave this three stars, but even that's a little bit generous for me. Just, this one didn't work for me. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and The Hawthorne Legacy. This is a YA mystery, basically like the movie Knives Out, and I loved it so much. It was some of my favorite books of the entire year. Five stars to both, and I highly recommend that everyone reads it. Just Haven't Met You Yet by Sophie Cousins. I don't know how to say this. I think this was a new release, so I saw it all over the airport. I just spontaneously picked it up, and I hated it. No, but I feel like this is actually just like generationally for 30 year olds, not for me. If you want a difficult philosophy slash theology book, Orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton was amazing. Super hard to read, but one of my favorite Christian theology books that I've read all year. And he basically goes through every thought of philosophy that he has ever studied and why he found it incomplete for the answers of the universe and just incomplete for his soul and why he believes Christianity to be true. So it's an apologetics of sort as well. Highly recommend this book. A few few days ago, I read Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. I read this to get out of my reading slump and it helped. It really did help. So I'm grateful for that. And it's actually set on a beach in Texas. You know, it was a unique romance book and it's also deals with like heavier topics and kind of sad. So I liked it. It served its purpose as getting me out of my reading slump. So four stars. Eh, three. Three stars. And then I just finished Crazy Love by Francis Chan, which is a Christian book and I highly recommend if you want to just be more on fire for Jesus. And then lastly, I read Alone With You in the Ether by Olive Blake, which would have made it into my favorite books of the year. I knew that was going to happen and I didn't want to film that book because I knew that was going to happen. This is a romance book by her and it is one of the most unique romance books I've ever read in my entire life. I think she's self-published so she doesn't force herself to write in that like third act conflict that's forced and doesn't make any sense for the plot, but you have to write like that type of thing. It's just so unique and it actually deals with like mental illness in here. The writing style, so pretentious. I love it. I love pretentious writing and I love reading about geniuses and he is called a genius many times in this book. I love it so freaking much. Five stars. Hey wait, this is the 69th book I read. Finley Donovan is killing it. A mystery. It was so good. Four stars. I love that this was the last book that I read this year. Look how pretty the colors are. I highly recommend those are all the books that I read. Leave me a book recommendation down in the comments. I always read those and I love seeing them. And if you like book videos, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, see my main channel stuff. And thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much.